Hi, everybody. Welcome to a very special edition of Talking Elite Fitness. I'm Sean Woodland alongside Tommy Marquez. We've got Lauren Khalil here and our good friend from CrossFit Mayhem, Roy McCartan. Roy, how you doing, man? It's me. Hey, um, I'm doing fantastic. I'm really happy to be here. I But now we've started the show three times. I thought, so first I thought I was cussing this is on the camera. Then I thought, like, wow, now we're talking about cussing on camera. Mm-hmm. Now I'm talking about talking about cussing on camera. So it's like, I'm, I'm happy to be here for the third time. This is awesome. It's, it's like an inception <laughs> show. It's a show within a show within a show. That's right. How you been? Bro, I'm great, man. Um, the uh, real long story short, it, uh, we turned a corner here in Tennessee. So no more longer sweltering heat. We've got fallen leaves and there's a little bit of air to breathe. You know, we've got obviously rogues coming up and there's always a million mm-hmm. things happening here, but there's a nice kind of, nice kind of pace going on at the moment. And um, we do what was really uncommon. We never saw it in California, but there's um, year round school here. So the kids are actually just oh, okay. yesterday started fall break. So we got two weeks of just, you know, kids running around the house. Wait, and... what year round school? Oh yeah. They've, that's that's... What they call it. it yeah. yeah go, go ahead it's no i was it's they've had there i remember when i was growing up there was like one in town and it was like the place you did not want to go because that sounded like the most <laughs> <laughs> well i'll tell you why I, I thought the same thing but now i love it it's um basically the the summer is condensed but not much like you still get a few months off of school but mm-hmm. as of right now we're on two week break so we instead of just spring break we get fall break as well which falls at an optimal time here because it's about to get pretty chilly. So a lot of people like split for the beach or whatever kind of recharge you, you want to get. And then two weeks at Christmas, another two weeks at spring break and a couple of other holidays in there. So it's actually a nice tempo, man. It's like every time you're ready for a break, you, you get a break. Nice. All right. I like that. I'll buy into that. I don't hate it. I, don't hate yeah. it. I was going to make either. a joke about them having to wear jump uh, co- different colored jumpsuits to school and there was bars on the windows, but I, I, it actually sounds, oh. you, you changed my mind. It's gotta be nice as a parent too. I'm sure yeah. it gives us, it's a constant, like, you know, you're getting a break. Uh, I guess it is. Unless like, for, it, it, unless it's, unless you're us and we went to Hawaii over the summer. So like, you know, we, we, we're not going on a trip. So now it's just like fighting over screen time and trying to get my kids to come to the gym. Mm. There you go. All right. Well, the reason we wanted to have you on just not only because you're a, a wonderful human being and a good friend and we miss you and by the way go on go on there's a there's like a bootleg version <laughs> of you running around here in scott's valley have you seen that is it really oh, i have i have yeah, seen like is, he, it's yeah, it's like a bootleg version it's not like a good it's like <laughs> rory it's like the thing that you would buy on that you know that place where they have like the knockoff handbags there's like a bootleg rory mckernan <laughs> running around but from a distance you can't tell Oh yeah, really? And like crazy. so, so present day, we're like gray hair and the whole thing. Yeah, it's Corey oh, wow. yeah. McCornin. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> anyway, just letting you know. I don't know if you had any like siblings. Well, give him a, give him a hug for me, man. Say what's I up. I will next time I see him, I'll just run up to him and just awkwardly grab him in the middle of his jog and just <laughs> just say, like, "You have no idea why I'm doing this." Hey, but- bud, give him a little give, give him a little funny <laughs> tickle. Hey, you smell different. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but uh, the other reason we wanted to have you on is, is that there was a uh, there was an email that that went out from CrossFit Mayhem to as part of their newsletter that I think you know definitely raised my eyebrows and. I think raise some eyebrows out there that in the subject of the line was, you know, CrossFit is over and that's going to certainly get your attention whenever you see that. <coughs> uh, but, you know, we obviously wanted to have you on because we just wanted context behind it and then have the conversation that I think this email was trying to touch off. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I let's address it head on because I think it's, it's a great opportunity for me. Like I'll speak right now on behalf of mayhem and then mm-hmm. later on I'll speak, you know, the, uh, uh, opinions and such will be will be my own but uh, re- uh to be completely honest with what happened is that it was a oversight by our team there was no review process in place and somebody with the intention of trumpeting the how fantastic the community was etc made a questionable decision in a clickbaity title which is completely not what we do at mayhem and um i, I knew as soon as i saw it and we thought that it was up for review and it was actually live um of course you know i got a text from rich and i got a text from other people who were like hey man, this is not our style mm-hmm. and so to to set the record straight on that it's it's not the mayhem vibe and um yeah, I'd love to tell you that it was a, an accident. It was going to say CrossFit is overly wonderful or whatever. Um, <laughs> but uh, no, it was it was sent out um, by a marketer who had the intention of getting attention and then drawing attention to the fact that the CrossFit community is still the most power th- powerful thing in the world, the best thing to be a part of, which I still do wholeheartedly believe. So um, no, it, it wasn't CrossFit or it wasn't CrossFit Mayhem taking a shot at CrossFit Inc. Um mm-hmm. It was it was a misguided attempt to say how wonderful this thing is that we are still involved with, but um, but yeah, it did get it did raise a lot of eyebrows, like you said. You know? So yeah, <laughs> well, maybe, and I think maybe any press is good press, right? Well, and to your point, if you read through the whole email, and I mean, I 
won't do it here, but I know a lot of people saw it. Like there is a positive vibe on this that essentially says that, Hey, we got a great community. Let's get out there and let's get people involved. I, I, so yeah. I don't think it was, it wasn't just a piling on and saying, Oh, everything is terrible. The sky is falling is here are some issues. Here's how we deal with them. And I, I have no problem with that, but I know that. Correct. Except, except um, it didn't say, because what I love is I, I, I don't like when people just throw out issues and right. sling mud and identify issues because anybody mm -hmm. can do that. Um, I do love when people say like, here's my potential solutions to these issues and yeah, they're productive 100%. and they're moving in the right direction. Or if you don't have one of those, like I wouldn't mind if you just shut your mouth. Like um, I think that it's a, it's a huge detriment to where all of us came from and this, what, what we had a large part all like along with a multitude of other people, obviously in growing and building. Um, and so I, I like to, if I, I stick to the old rule, like that I want to tell my kids, like if you don't have something positive to add, it's not just something nice to say, but if you don't have something positive to add, mm -hmm. don't say anything at all. Um, but I like to, I really like to get involved in solutions and I hate when people are simply identifying issues, right? It's, um, in fact, one of my largest pet peeves. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's, this is what I, I wanted to do is it, I, cause I think that this, this is a, it's a conversation that was, I think that this email wanted to touch off and I think probably did that I have had with multiple people over the past couple of weeks and just in private. Uh, and I think it's worth having here. And this, again, why we wanted to have you guys on, because I, I, I think most people can agree that there are some issues I'm not going to say problems, but there are some issues that need to be dealt with in order to properly shepherd CrossFit into the future and you know get it to grow and get more people involved. And I would be Certainly. interested from from your perspective, and maybe and I don't know if this is Mayhem's official perspective, what you think maybe those are and what the solutions could be. Sure. And I'll, I'll actually, I'll, I'll take the opportunity to just draw a hard line in the sand. And so from here forward, the opinions expressed are, are my own and not Mayhem's. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, so that's my, that's my official disclaimer. Maybe we can make a, a quick graphic, you know, Don't <laughs> um, but I, you know, obviously like I think that, that most of our service similar mind. Now the, the really short answer to your question, if we're all being really honest is that if I knew that answer, then I would probably be at the helm of CrossFit and mm -hmm. have uh, the solution to what, what, the end state of the, you know, what we're trying to address this problem is extremely nuanced and complicated. And so this show, we're not going to get to what, you know, we're not going to have a five-step plan to like, what's going to bring CrossFit into the future and get it back to the the health that it originally was. Uh, but I think we'd have a really fun conversation about, you know, there's definitely some, some, some factual things that are, that are going wrong that where CrossFit's clearly having trouble and not trying to make any bones or secrets yeah. about it. Um, and then I guess if, if I was really just going to identify what the solutions would be. And again, I don't pretend to be like the Nostradamus of CrossFit because I think that outside of CrossFit and within CrossFit take politics or any kind of subject matter today, people are trying to simplify and make it a binary issue where it's like, you need to do this or this, or the solution is this. Um, and it's, it's just not obviously right. Like think of the, however many millions of people they're doing CrossFit and however many millions of opinions that those people all have that are, wholly different or different in a nuanced way. Um, but my end thought, I guess, to, to, to give you at least something to chew on is, was the nature of that email. And it was that I do believe that we have to accept, and I don't, it's, it's not as CrossFit over, but it is certainly like anybody who hasn't gotten to the point in their mind that CrossFit is different is needs to, you know, have that funeral for the past life that they lived um, and the emotions that they felt within what they expected CrossFit to be and understand that everything evolves and it moves forward. And we need to think about what, what the future of CrossFit would look like. Like, because if people were asking me, is CrossFit ever going to be what it was? The answer is obviously not like Sean's never going to be who he was 10 years ago. And Tommy's never going to be who he was 10 years ago. And it really wouldn't want to be right. Things, things move and they evolve and they change. Um, and so the answer to the question for me would be um, the community. Um, I know it's extremely vague and sort of um, ethereal, but there's this there's this irony that exists in my mind where uh, let's just let's take the sport first and um, the sport costs a lot of money to run mm -hmm. right so simultaneously yes there are dick ups and people are making mistakes and there are 
things that are as far from perfect as they could potentially be. But in order for it to get healthy again, the community still has to rally around it and support it. Um, so and what I mean by that in particular is you see folks who are actively promoting like, hey, don't do the open. It's a tough one for me because I get what you're saying. Like, why am I going to pay this money for something that's not bringing me the same value that it used to? My community's not as into it. Um, but then in the same breath, like, and, and I guess I'm talking about content creators and I'm not trying to throw stones. Like I, I get it, mm -hmm. what they're, I, I think, actually I don't get it, but it, but whatever, it's not my business. Um, but the bread and butter on the backside is talking about CrossFit and breaking down competition and analysis of events and things like that. And like, I think it's just very important for all of us to understand that we'll, we'll have to be part of the solution or just be part of whatever comes next and however we want to be, because this will stop existing if we stop, if we wholeheartedly and intentionally stop supporting the community, the participation, mm -hmm. et cetera. Yeah. Um, and I feel like I'm rambling a little bit, so I'll probably shut up there and kind of let you um, redirect. Well, I, I think it begs the question because one thing you talked about is, is health, right? Like what, what, and I guess that's always been something that I would say even when we worked for CrossFit was somewhat unclear around what, what equals a health, like healthy for the company and for the ecosystem, right? Um, you know, there were times back in the day when we thought everything was going gangbusters and all of a sudden the first CFO came in and was like, Hey, we got to get the company healthy again. Mm -hmm. Right. And we're like, Oh, I didn't know it wasn't mm -hmm. healthy. Yeah. That mm -hmm. was never communicated to us. And then obviously there's been, you know, iterations and cycles since then. And, and I think with now, um, it seems like we've gotten some tidbits, but I think understanding what is exactly, what is the line where CrossFit is healthy versus not? in terms of you know income revenue expenditures the sport what they're willing to market and all of those things because like it or not i there's still the, the the straw that stirs the drink here and i think a lot of people feel the effects you know depending on which way they decide to stir it yeah that's interesting so you're saying we should do we should define the parameters by which a healthy company is defined well i i think if crossfit is trying to i i, I I guess, yeah, probably at some point. I mean, I, and I don't know if it's CrossFit is ever going to state that publicly, right? Because, you know, they're owned by a different group now and, and you know, the board might not want to disclose all the financials and things like that. But I think it's interesting to say, you know, when we throw out metrics like, you know, people aren't Googling CrossFit at the same rate, you know, maybe there are, there are less affiliates than there were last year or affiliate growth isn't great, but... Don said on our show not too long ago that affiliate retention is the highest that it's it's been in over a decade. So it's like, all right, these are all a lot of things that can, depending on if you just look at them in isolation, could mean different things, right? So like, how does this all play into the bigger thing? What is the number that we need to get to? Like, what is the, what, what is an, uh, it's almost like a population control, right? That just regardless of how many people there are on this earth, we need to maintain a certain amount of like children per pe per humans you know, to maintain a healthy population level. I think it's like the same thing for CrossFit. Like what's the healthy number for affiliates? Now we know that absent of growth and everything like that, this thing is just going to continue to exist at least at a very baseline. And I, I, just, I don't think we know it because otherwise mm -hmm. we're just throwing stones at something. We're saying like, oh, HQ is messing up this or they're doing that or this is doomed or it's going to be over because we're these metrics aren't pointing. And secretly we could look around and be like, hey, we actually have more paying affiliates than ever before or CrossFit's overhead is less, I, but we just don't know. True. And I, and I don't think that you would ever get that from anything. that's not a publicly traded company, right? Like I can't, yeah. I'm not going to ask yeah. you guys for your P and L just, you know, if I'm to, to decipher <laughs> how healthy talking elite fitness is right. Yeah. Um, yeah. I guess maybe. Yeah. So then, so then how do you find, how do you define it outside of that? And I do think that some of the things you mentioned are important. So uh, if, if we were to, if we were taking from the business side, um, you would obviously identify um, participation in the sport in terms of the open, um, if the events are profitable themselves, which we can get into the CrossFit Games later, and, and whether it's a popular or unpopular decision to go to Fort Worth, I think that most likely that's going to be a major cost savings um, mm -hmm. for, for the sport to carry on and live on. And again, as I felt this year, become a very good marketing for what we all know and love. And so mm -hmm. I guess my, my definition of, of, is it healthy is, is it, um, is it as effective as it, as it has been in the path or can it, can it, can it effectively grow what an, at, at the end of the day is a training methodology that promotes constantly varied functional fitness at a high intensity to 
an ever growing number of people. And I've seen, you know, obviously in when Justin Berg was there, he threw out some numbers that were like astronomical. And I've seen that Don Fall really peeled that back to something that he thinks is realistic. Um, but um, yeah, gro growth of the program, number one. And then obviously then you would look at the, the profitability of all the verticals that are involved. Mm -hmm. um, you named, you mentioned affiliates. Um, uh, the, the open is a big one. Obviously seminars used to be a, a massive force and, um, and like you said, we don't have access to that. So I think I, at some point we're pontificating and it comes, it's going to be a bit more about feelings and what we see from where we're sitting. Go yeah. Ahead. Oh, well, I will say I, I just did some back of the napkin math here. Um, based on, and granted, we don't have course, uh, photos from the last week of September, but going off the first three weeks, um, and extrapolating that out, roughly 825 uh, people took L1s just in person across 49 locations. So based on the uh, the average cost and everything like that for the month, uh, no, sorry, sorry, through three, I was through three weeks. So roughly 1,100 people took L1s in person. That's not counting webinars, and that's not counting L2s and other things, um, specialties across 65 locations. So I mean, if, if obviously there's ebbs and flows, but you're looking at anywhere from 12 to 13 million annually, in, just from in-person L1s, based off of again, this is this is back of the napkin math. The amount of virtual webinars that's you're looking at maybe another four million. Now it could be off, you know, a decent amount. And I know that's not that's definitely not what CrossFit was doing in its heyday, but it's still a decent amount of money. Yeah, and and you. You look at from other educational pieces within that, you know, you, you bump that up to maybe 20 million total and CrossFit with affiliate through affiliates and that are at least bringing in uh, $50 million annually, hopefully, assuming there's some error there without talking about the games or selling stuff or any, any other possible income streams. And I don't know. To yeah, but, me, that's, and again, I like, like just, just to kind of, uh, poke holes in that just a little bit napkin math is not it's fun yeah but you but like you said yourself like you, you have no ideas of what the inner workings are where cost savings were, were made up um mm -hmm. where investment dollars were allocated to where new profitability sure. centers may be you know what i'm saying like we're yeah I, I love the idea of it but it used to always really grind my gears when people would do the napkin math on the open and be like well these guys are rich they're making money hand over fist but like <laughs> you know what the hell it costs mm -hmm. to put on the crossfit games mm -hmm. like you don't know what yeah. it costs to be on television we all know that nobody knows what the hell it costs to do a live broadcast especially at, at the the scale oh, yeah. that yep. this um that this audience is used to and so so um, again, like it's really hard to have a productive conversation if you're not within those walls. But I think that what everyone can actually look at in a tangible fashion is, and, and again, these, these ideas are going to be very disparate and, and some will be like opposing, I'm sure, mm -hmm. uh, is like in your sphere of influence or your center, like you guys have a very loud voice. Like, what do you think is the most positive? And maybe the outcome for you guys is not what's beneficial to CrossFit, right? But what what is the... What is the outcome that you think is the most desirable to keep this community pushed forward? And we've, we've said this, um, I mean, I said it before I was kicked out of CrossFit, but it was, you know, like <laughs> I, I still did CrossFit the day after I was fired. Yeah. True story. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. I still love it. And I will still, I will still like, if anybody asks me, like you, you cannot convince me I'm a Kool-Aid drinker. I believe in methodology. I believe in, um, what we advocate and like, it didn't change because I'm not, calling it the same thing or because my title is not the same in the same organization. And Agreed. so when I think about um, what's the impact that I could make or the desired outcome, it's like, I, there's so many people I'm like, maybe we hyper-focus on what we're involved with. Right. So I spent many, many, many countless hours in small rooms with you guys, drawing on whiteboards and talking on mm -hmm. microphones and having a blast. Um, but then you, you zoom out and you think about all the affiliate owners that you've met and you think about all the people who have operated businesses in the space that grew from something into, or from nothing into, you know, fit aid and, and, um, all these massive organizations. Um, and so that's, I, I don't know, man, I, 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 it helps less probably in the context of the larger conversation, but that's the only way that I can see it is to try and encourage people to draw back and be like, you know, what is the desired outcome? Because I think, I, I think I'll talk out the other side of my mouth. The issue now, and uh, I'll take some current events where um, like Castro was promoting the proven versus HWPO versus mm -hmm. mayhem. Awesome idea for a consumer, for a viewer, it would be the shit, but yeah. you've got 
organizations now that have filled a void. They've created a market of their own that's grown substantially. They all have their own sponsorships. They all have their own financial needs. They all have athletes who have individual preferences and desires and fears of getting beat or whatever it is. And so like just with those three organizations, think about the logistics of trying to get them to come together and collaborate on on a thing, right? And then and then spell that out to however many mm -hmm. thousands of affiliates we have now and however many millions of people we have doing CrossFit. So mm -hmm. um yeah, I don't know. When you when you put it into that scope for me, I'm like, I think that um I do I, I like Don Fall a lot. I think he's got a great background for it. It scares me a tremendous amount that they've churned their C suite quite a bit. Um and uh and then I guess the uh the last part of it that I that I dislike is I don't see a tremendous amount of evolution in you know, I think you got to probably change the formula, right? Um, like I said, I don't think that, that constantly varied functional movements at high intensity needs, it doesn't need to be enhanced, but it could mm -hmm. be, it could be added to, et cetera. Uh, but in the way that they, um, you know, we talked about education, the way that they enhance the educational elements. Um, mm -hmm. I think it, it really struck a chord with me when the CFO left, um, cause I think technologically there's some stuff left to be desired. Um, but at the end of the day, I guess my, my main point would be, um, Community wide, um, and I'm not saying that you continue to like let the organization walk all over you, or that like in past years where they just kind of ran the roost and and we were there, right? But um, you know, CrossFit did whatever it wanted to, and net net, it I think that it grew the program. And so, Tommy, to your point about what's healthy and unhealthy, like it it got CrossFit in more people's hands. I guess I can I can definitively say that without getting into any of the but, um, mm -hmm. and so in order, in order to do that, I, I do feel like there's an importance and this is why I will say for mayhem is why we're cheering for CrossFit is I do think that it helps to have that stirring stick, right? Mm -hmm. Otherwise everything becomes so fragmented and segmented that, um, it's, it's, I don't want to say it's dog eat dog, but it's like, mm -hmm. you're this group of people who has this interest is looking out for themselves. And this one has, is looking out for themselves. Um, but the, there needs to be a central rallying point where at least we can come together around that. Yeah. Uh, well, go ahead, and kind of, and kind of to your point, talking about training camps specifically, I, I think it's, it's great for the training camps, but do you think that the growth of the mayhems, the provens, the HWPOs is actually going to hurt CrossFit in the long run with like opportunities to make money, opportunities for content, all of those things that now you see training camps do? Well, yes and no, um, like content in particular, right? So we, we're we really proud of a piece that we're going to release soon that's very community driven. And it's like, it's not about how wonderful Rich Froning is or Luke Parker's abs or Keith <laughs> Harris' snatch. It's about a dude who comes to the coffee shop every day and he was on the border of, of taking his own life due to depression from post-traumatic stress and his, his stuff in the military. And stories that you guys know mm -hmm. yeah. because we told a million of them back in the day. Um, but I guess... Um, and again, as an extremely biased member of CrossFit Mayhem, I can I can still say like that, it's still at the end of the day, it's serving us, right? It's our community that we're telling the story about. And the rallying cry was when we had a group of just media ninjas who were making stories about Athena or about mm -hmm. addicts who had yep. just the magic that is happening on a daily basis that we all know is happening. We all have a million stories about, but like, you know, the, what I can put together on my iPhone barely belongs on Instagram, much less like, you know, trying to yeah. motivate the masses. And so I think, um, I think, yeah, certainly they gave up a lot of market share on, on certain things. But I, I think that again, if they were going back to Tommy's analogy of the stir stick, like if they, I still think that those opportunities present themselves because they are, um, but when, when I was sitting in that seat, I really loved it. It was, they have the opportunity to be, um, how do I say it? Um, I don't know, just a friend of all parties, right? Like, yeah. like I was saying, like there's, it's very unlikely to get groups who are in direct opposition to like co-create things is yeah. for better or worse. Um, whereas CrossFit could still sit back and, and champion the, I don't know, the, the kumbaya -ness of what happens when we all stop thinking about the bullshit and the, transactional nature of things but ultimately like what we do in the gym on a daily basis here's this is the biggest question for me is when i think about like how do you keep this how do you how does crossfit as a business stay healthy and it's like they have to identify what it is that they offer that's a value right now 
because it's not, I mean, they offer good programming, but there are plenty of other places that offer good programming. Like, it, then they kind of got into that game late as far as programming for affiliates. It's yeah. not media right now because you have so many other outlets doing media and doing really good media. I mean, Mayhem does great media. You guys put out you know, awesome stuff. You know, you got the Buttery Bros, you got you know, all the different training camps that are putting it out. So what is it? And it's really the, the thing I keep coming back to is like the thing that they offer a value is training trainers, right? That's that's the thing. It's it's, it's the coaching certificates. It's it's the L ones. It's the L twos. It's it's all that stuff. But how do you make that a predictable and reliable stream of revenue without exerting more control over the affiliates and requiring anybody who coaches to constantly be upgrading and their their certificates and taking classes? So that that that's one question. You know, and then the other one is like from the sports side, you know, how do you make that profitable? If that's going to be your, if that is going to be something that you're using as a marketing tool, you also have to make that profitable. So those are the two, for me, the biggest questions that need, they need to answer moving forward. And I, and I think if they leaned into the, Hey, we're going to train trainers and we're going to give everybody the tools necessary. And then they, they find a way to advertise outside of the bubble and tell the stories that, you know, Ro, you're talking about that we all know about to drive people into affiliates that's, you know, I, I think that's probably the best case scenario, but you know, the cross it right now is a corporation, they're a business. They need to make money. They need to be profitable. Like they don't need to be about, they don't need to be, the community needs to be promoted inside the affiliates and that's where it's magic, but they cross it. need to worry about making this profitable and then giving their, for lack of a better term, you know, franchisees, which I know they're not a tool to make money. And in, in helping them promote that. And that, so I don't know what the answer is, but I have yet to hear it from them. Yeah. I mean, but at, at the same time, I think a lot of gyms are, that are, you know, maybe on less than firm ground, you know, a few years ago are also still struggling right now because we talked about this the other day. There's a lot, you know, you're hearing anecdotes of gyms that, are now the the bills coming due from whatever got mm -hmm. held over during COVID, or you know anyone trying to borrow money, you know to to build businesses if you have to take on debt, interest rates certainly aren't going to help mm -hmm. that right now. There's some there, there's some economic issues along with inflation and having to charge, you know, different membership fees. But uh, I'm always curious. If she, that's what like you talk about finding ways to you know highlight and I guess bolster up the things that are going to they're they're uniquely positioned to to succeed in that's i guess that's always what baffled me about the media decisions and we don't have to rehash all of this old stuff because but i think one of the, the strong benefits of putting out from crossfit's end high quality media is brand identity you know how many people took l1s back in the day that necessarily didn't have any interest in becoming a lifelong coach Mm -hmm. But they want, but they identified with what was going on in their affiliate. So, hey, maybe I want to be able to help out my affiliate owner from from time mm -hmm. to time, or I, I would, I just want to learn a little bit more and be able to say I have my L one, or to be able to like you know help out that guy in the gym in between classes, even though I'm not coaching all the time. And and I think that's that of that or, brand or just dude, just yeah. just because it was just because the brand was fucking cool. Sorry, yeah, because yeah, the for brand sure. was awesome, right? Like exactly yeah. the. Yeah. I mean, yeah, to your point, it was like, it was something that people wanted to be associated with. Right. Well, and, and I again, feel like, like now, I'm, like that's been replaced with like the mayhem shirts. Like you're now part of like a camp, you know, it used to be, we all just wanted something that said cross it on it because you just want to be part of that. And now yeah, it's like, you yeah. got the mayhem cause you got HWPO, you got proven, you got, you know, under like all these, like that's kind of now where I think people are I identifying a little bit. And yeah. I, but I think that we, I think that also like, I'll, I'll, I'll also say that we, are myopic or we're like really inside the bottle because we, mm. we oftentimes are drawn to the CrossFit games or like the gym that I'm at. Obviously we serve a multitude of like tremendous athletes and there are still a, a large amount of CrossFit affiliates who are just diehard gung ho and not necessarily anymore because of how cool CrossFit was, but because it gave them the tools to create that in their own, in their own community. Mm -hmm. And, and they're still there loving it. And they're not, they're not mayhem or HWPO or whatever. I, th I think that they are, I don't know. They've got their own unique identity and that's not necessarily a solution to the problem. It's just an observation to say, like, I don't think by and large, everybody's bought into one of three camps. You know, I think, I no, think I, I'm still, just using that as an example. Yeah. You know, but I, but yes, to your point, like, yes, it's, it's fragmented and it's missing that, uh, that central cohesive unit. And, and 
again, I, I won't speak on behalf of Mayhem, but um, we're we're obviously not we're not trying to cut anybody off of the legs. In fact, we're trying to enhance efforts like this mm -hmm. to move towards community type media, like um, for better or worse. And, and again, now this is me talking is like, um, I'm incurably optimistic typically. And I, I want CrossFit to succeed. I'll just, you know, just flat out. Right. Like, and re regardless of my, uh personal experiences back in the day pain that was caused but there was also just as much joy and amazing amazingness For to it sure. and yeah. um you know i say this to rich all the time and i think that he agrees is like i don't want i have my own kids but i don't want rich's son to get to my kid's age and be like oh you're the champion of the crossfit games huh like what, what was crossfit again you know like mm -hmm. i want this legacy that we all I mean, we love it man you know um mm -hmm. yeah but it but it is um it is now going to be wholly different. And so I think, yeah, when, once we accept that, we can address the points that you're making, Sean, like in whatever way we can, you know, but again, mm -hmm. like we're not, uh, we're not gonna be invited into the boardroom. It's not, they're not going to run their, right. Uh, no, nobody's going to run their business by democracy. Um, I do, I do have to say that at this year's CrossFit games, I had um, a surge of optimism. Like I had a really good time with the games and I had a really good experience. Mm -hmm. I spent very little time watching the competition. True story. I spent a lot of time interacting with people and brands and um, it just straight up, it felt good. And I'm not, I'm not, there's no reason for me to bullshit you about that. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and when I say that, you know, when, and then I can speak on behalf of Mayhem and say like, we took a bet and we supported the CrossFit games. Mm -hmm. Like that was a, a, a large financial burden. Um, and it was also massive manpower suck, but it was fully worth it. Not just because we wanted people to sign up for mayhem athlete, but again, because I, I wholeheartedly believe that this thing is better as a whole. Right. So I think that, again, I guess I keep coming back to it. It's, it's not very black and white. It's not very numbers based, but um, I think the, the obvious answer to me is that all of us are better together. Um, even if we're, even if we're slightly pulling in different directions, they're always looking out for number one somewhat, I think that we're better when we're together because if the whole thing implodes and tomorrow, it, like I think that a lot of people who um, are always on the war path and always throwing stones and always trying to find fault need to really question themselves what they would do tomorrow if CrossFit Inc. ceased to exist. Would people watch their videos? Would people go to their events? Would they have as many clients? Um, and, and I could be off base there, right? Um, and uh I don't know, you know, poke holes in that. But I think that I, I think that we're better together when we can rally around, like, mm -hmm. even though we have moved in separate directions for whatever's happened over the last few years, um, there's a cohesiveness that still allows everyone to enjoy this ecosystem. I just getting back to the whole thing, like answer cross needs to answer the question, like, what do they value? They need to uh, they need to figure out in to what you're saying, Ro, it's different. Okay, well, then what are we? Because if you're going to, what, I don't know the specific number that Don's thrown out there about the number of CrossFitters that they want. You know, they, what is it like 300 million or 30? I, I don't know what the number is. Yeah. But he's, he's I think it from, yeah, I think, I think it went from hundreds of millions to like at least tens of millions, which is like, yeah, I could, I could buy that <laughs> more, yeah. more obtainable. But here's, if you're going to hit that number, okay, what's the plan to hit it? Because you're either going to yeah. have to open up a lot more affiliates, which given the economic, realities in at least in the united states right now that is easier a lot easier said than done because of you know, interest rates and the way how hard it is to borrow money right now or you're gonna have to find a different way to do it uh you could go virtual you know that that's part of it too but but what's that plan and the other thing is it's like how do we at, at one point we sort of hit a cap with growth like growth the, the affiliates were going up and up and up when everybody was buying in you could open an affiliate just had to get your level one had a space like that was going up and up and up and then the cream kind of ro rose at the top and there's still some, we've all been to them. There's still some affiliates out there that you probably, every affiliate owner in any city can probably point to the ones like, that's the one that's, that's the problem. And if someone walks into that gym and has a bad experience, that's probably going to. They're not going to go back to a right, different exactly. one. And, and even a different yeah, one because the perception is this, it's going to be the same thing. So I don't know if CrossFit might, because it's going to, piss a lot of affiliate owners off, but at what point do they need to say, we need to exert a little more quality control here to make sure that we are rising, the rising tide lifts all boats and that we are promoting our best. Like we don't want more, we want better and we can put more people into those and that's how we can get more people involved.
So I think that's another decision that they need to they need to talk about. It's like what how do we I don't know if they want I don't I don't if if I don't think saying we don't want more, we want better is is necessarily true though. I think they want both. I, I would agree with that, but what's more realistic to give you a better to give you quicker growth to where you want to be because sure you can get more i think a low barrier to entry in a format that a lot of affiliate owners really really like with very little oversight and the freedom to make their own mistakes and grow I, but, but i mean they already do that and i know several affiliates that don't have coaches with l1s they just hire them to have coaches in the building and it's not like CrossFit oversees anything like that. And I'm not advocating for this. I'm just saying it's a, I think it's a discussion that needs to be had because if you talk like, you know, if I go to CrossFit Mayhem in Cookville, I know exactly what I'm getting. I'm getting a first class experience with great people, like all kinds of stuff. And they are clearly one of the best out there. Like the, the they are, it's like NC fit that the, that Jason Kalipa runs. His gyms are fantastic. Um, but not all of them are like that. And I think that, I, I like the fact that there is a low barrier of entry and that people can can start this, but isn't that can that not that also has a potential to do harm because any old person with an L1 can start can start a, a facility, start a, a gym, mm -hmm. and all of a sudden people go and have a bad experience and then they're never walking back into the doors of across the gym again. Like I, I I've talked to people who that's happened to them. And I'm not again, I'm not saying like I'm not advocating for this, but like is from a business standpoint, that's a discussion that they I think they need to have. I just, I, I mean, uh, okay, well, well, two things. One, one, I'm, I'm an old dog in that sense, and I have to agree with Tommy that um, you're right, mayhem is amazing. But at one point, it was a shitty, dusty barn that, you know, two dudes were just kind of mm -hmm. throwing around weights and learning, learning how to do it, right? And it, and it grew over time. And, of course, um, Rich is unique to other affiliates and the fact that he had an amazing career that he could build upon as well. But, like, a, a, you know, the I do think that the barrier to entry and, and the, well, I guess the caveat is that you could say that it was it was also paired with a tremendous amount of educational content that could accompany it and that people had online resources. I don't know how you saw the problem with somebody who had a bad experience. Um, you know, I've, I've been to a ton of affiliates. I've been to ones that were like lackluster or didn't impress me. Um, but I don't I don't see this tremendous amount of, of affiliates personally where I'm like, oh, man, this, this is bad juju. Um, and, and I guess the but more importantly, to your point, what I think is even even look at mayhem, it's like or Kalipa would have a better answer to this. You should ask him. And I don't know his answer, but if you really want to enforce that, what does that require? Exactly. Well, if you want to have, if you want to have oversight over 15,000 gyms, well, I'm going to say like, it's a massive amount of personnel. It's mm -hmm. a massive amount of new systems. It's a massive amount of, um, probably things that would waste a lot of time when you'll probably get your more bang for your buck in, in, in other areas. Um, and that's just me shooting from the hip on that. But, but mm -hmm. to, to think about that, like an oversight system for, every single CrossFit affiliate, one, at least 5,000 of them at least would shut their doors immediately if you told them that they were going to, you were going to come in and do quality control in their gym because <laughs> they've been around for, I just saw David Osorio, he's had his gym open for 14 years and he runs a tremendous show. So if CrossFit mm -hmm. said, hey man, you know, knock, knock, I'm the inspector. And you'd be like, oh cool, you were just hired two, two years ago and like you got your L1, you know, six months ago, mm -hmm. kick rocks. Um, so I think you'd have an issue there. Um but I think from a manpower standpoint, like even if we, yeah. even the gyms that do our affiliate programming, if Mayhem was to say like, oh, we're going to give you, you know, this oversight, and these protocols, you have to do this thing. It's like you, you're, you're immediately hiring dozens, if not more yeah. people, if you've got more than a thousand gyms. Right. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah. And I guess the other important thing is like, I have to, well, I do believe because I know Adrian Bosman personally, I know Dave Castro personally, um, uh, and, a, and a few other people in the organization. And of course, we had like sidebar conversations about some of the minutia, but like they're not idiots. Um, so yes, they've thought of these things. And I, I um, yeah, we'd have to be e either involved in those conversations or at least fly on the wall to to know why certain things are being prioritized over, over others. Yeah, and I'm not, again, I'm not advocating for this, but I'm just saying like if if, if you identify, like I think they pro they should, that training coaches and then getting people into affiliates, that's the best, uh, from a business standpoint, best way for them to have like a, a, res a revenue stream that's reliable. Wouldn't you want to know, like have some sort of, I don't want to say guarantee, but know like where the floor was, like control that a little bit to know that when people that are coming in are having the best experience possible. And and I agree with you, Ro, like that is a, like that cat, like that ship has sailed. That cat is out of the bag. I don't know how you're going to like rein that back in. 
I, I think they're already doing it, but I think it's anything beyond what they're doing now is, uh, is a slippery slope for that. And I think it would kind of eventually lead its way back to what Rory was saying, because right now they are, you could argue that headquarters has provided more tools for aspiring affiliate owners or upstart affiliate owners now than they ever have before with mm-hmm. the affiliate playbook and all of these resources. They're probably my thing. And I guess I did a poor job of kind of relating it earlier. I think the number one thing that they can do is repair their own voice and ability to have a strong voice within the community. Cause I, I think, think they've, I, I think they've lost it. Mm-hmm. And I, 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 and Roy, you touched on it. Like when Greg made all the changes to the media thing, he was maybe trying to democratize it a bit, but I've always, um, and this may, may be a little a rough analogy, but I've always felt like he was trying to turn it from a one man show to a choir. But the way he did it was by killing the lead singer's voice. Right. And expecting everyone else to be ready to go. Yeah. And I just don't think there were enough backup singers ready to go to step up to the plate like that. When really what could have happened is you could have had both. You could have maintained a strong presence and allow, opened up the doors a little bit more and gotten both at the same time. Mm-hmm. If that makes sense. If you ever lose face in Tommy Marquez and then you get a choir analogy... You're like, damn, the dude's got it. Like, you yeah, know, <laughs> off the top rope, just he said it was going to be rough, and then he went to choir. And I'm picturing yeah, the church. Good. Gosh, mm-hmm. when you think I'm going to, I think you're going to bob you weave. Um, I should yeah, say no, Mariachi. Yeah. Sorry, it would have been more on brand. <laughs> can, I, can I go back to the whole like mayhem, the start of mayhem too? Like, you go back to that and too. Like, what was the standard of across a gym at that point too? Like, it wasn't like it is now, where you have these established juggernauts that have really, uh, you know. Yeah. And so, and I'm not saying like we shouldn't allow people to grow, but I'm just saying like there's got to be maybe the barrier of entry is raised a little bit just for quality control. And, and I, I, I'm not advocate. I'm just, I'm not, I'm just suggesting these are conversations that they need to have from a business standpoint to figure out how they're going to make this thing viable moving forward. It's yeah. almost like it. No, I, I, yeah. I get what you're saying. Yeah. It's like have the conversation just as an exercise to maybe uncover some ideas, maybe. That- yeah, exactly. You see, that's it. But I because there's no other business in the that I know of. I could be wrong about this. That has this model. That has affiliates all uh, over the place. I'd have to, there are some, but I mean, you're basically licensing a trademark at that point. At this point, yes. So, at least in the fitness standpoint, and, and I've I've said this before. Look at Orange Theory Fitness. Orange Theory Fitness has taken a bite out of the people who go into CrossFit gyms, right? And this goes back to why you need to advertise because you uh, now have competitors that you don't have. You have Peloton. People are staying at home doing fitness. You have Orange Theory. You have you know F45. You have, uh, yeah, you have all these different places out there. That a are, lot of those companies are struggling now. Yeah, because they, now people are like, oh, wait, I don't have to stay at home anymore and I can, I can go. And look, the, the economy in general, period. But... This is not the landscape it was 10 years ago. You have competitors in this space. So how are you going to deal with that? And they, they don't, there's no, there's no national advertising campaign. There's nothing that will get you on the map and get you into the fight. Like word of mouth is great, but it's that, not. You know, yeah. That's what, where repairing the other, voice comes in for me. I agree. You know, yeah. it's. Would hiring a new media team or hiring a media team from CrossFit help? I don't, here's the problem. Like, They've seeded so much ground in that space now that in order to take it back would, I think, require an effort that they're not prepared to pay for. Like, they would have to dump a lot of money into that to make sure that they're the loudest voice in the space. And re- like it would, and, and because there's, there's, a, there's a lot of great content creators out there, a lot of great media members out there who are really, you know, doing a, they do a fantastic job, whether you like them or not. Um, or, or they just act, they become an aggregator and they leverage their platform. That, for that. could be it too. Yeah. Right. Like, mm-hmm. well, and I think you saw, I think you saw a shift in strategy with, um, Lauren. Yes. I think that they do need to do that. Um, but I, I think you also saw a shift in strategy with, um, and some people took issue with it because there's, there's other players in the game, but we benefited from it obviously mm-hmm. with access, uh, to, uh, certain competitions for partners mm-hmm. and we, yep. we, we were partners. So for example, mayhem, and people who are collaborating on those projects. Um, I know that multiple entities have now, I don't know what came to fruition and what did not, but collaborated on new documentaries and things like that. Um, and that is one strategy, obviously, like there's there's not an option to not collaborate with not just camps, but you know, power brokers in the industry who can help enhance mm-hmm. that storytelling and they can utilize other people's assets. But I do see um, credit where credit's due. I think that that 
the writing's on the wall that that's probably going to happen more frequently. Um, and I don't and so get I, that. I, do think that's I don't from a business standpoint, like, from a business standpoint, I, that, that makes, I don't understand. So take the games, for example, like that is your most visible, most valuable content that you own, that you have, that you can control yeah. and you can monetize. And instead of doing that, you give it away. But it, but it solves the problem that you just pointed out, which yeah, but I but, team to do it. But I'm 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 talking about a, amount of money. I yeah, but you're not benefiting your business, is what I'm saying. And you're still there's still multiple voices, and this is nothing against anybody who got you know behind the scenes exclusive access. They all did great stuff. Like I'm not saying that. I'm just saying from a business standpoint, from a pure business standpoint. What sense does it make to give away the most, some of the most valuable stuff you have? Like you could have controlled all that, monetized it, and made money. And again, that is what their goal is. Like they're a corporation; they're trying to make money. So if you're trying to be viable for the future, and you're giving away things of value, who do you think benefited more, Mayhem or CrossFit, from your guys's access? Um, I think that we have different goals, but I think like I think it certainly solved a problem for them. That you're right. Maybe long. Certainly, Sean. Long term. Mm -hmm that that might not be the way you want to go but to your point of like if if i have sponsor dollars are down participation in the open is mm -hmm. down um you got to run this amazing event um broadcast costs what it does like sooner or later i'm sure that you have to prioritize and i think that it was probably a prioritization so who benefited more i'm not sure um but at the end of the day cross crossfit inc was able to benefit off of our abilities to create good stories, even though you're right, they couldn't monetize it in the same way. But having said that, like I wasn't able to monetize in any way an ESPN broadcast. Mm -hmm. So they still hold the, the goods, you know, the live competition. Um, mm -hmm. And, and they got to utilize other people. I mean, it's like, I think it's actually, again, like, I think it's, it's a good solution to a problem, even if it's not a long term solution. I hope that it is for mayhem's sake. Um, yeah. But it's, it's a way to get. And of course, like, the agreement is in place where like there's non disparagement. Like I can't go in there and make right, you know, right. I can't make we couldn't go make videos and bitching about the judges or, you know, yeah. like, oh man, you know, Castro, what a stupid event. You know, it was obviously they vetted that and made sure that that wasn't gonna be the mm -hmm. nature of the content. So if that's true, and, and this is and sorry, this this is one point that should be made for the future. And I won't just say just for mayhem, but it's what I was trying to say is like there are now entities in the space and affiliates as a whole should be considered one of them where they're going to have to work collaboratively with these groups a lot more because for better or worse, the, those yeah. entities do now have a foothold um, in, in, in a huge amount of different areas. Right. And so mm -hmm. that's a, that's a dynamic that shifted massively where it used to be like, Hey, you, you're lucky to be here. And yeah. uh, whether you're a sponsor or an athlete or whatever it was to now like, Hey, let's, how can we work together to have mutual benefit? Yeah. And, and to kind of beat a dead horse a little bit, I think that while, like you said, it was a good solution to a short-term problem, I think the longer, the bigger issue is that they cannot yet capitalize on their own platform, right? And that they have to turn to other people and that's their only option. Yeah. I'm just looking at this purely from a monetary business standpoint. And you're right, bro. Like it's good to get those stories out and they got sure. you know, more eyeballs on it and more, more awareness. Like I'm, I'm all for that. But if we're talking about like how does CrossFit become viable as a business and profitable, giving away your most valuable content, you know, what are the, Wait, what and, the and, and sorry, and I and I don't know the parameters for anybody else, but like it, it wasn't free for us. Like okay, to, I right, I know, know that. Was, but, <laughs> okay, I mean there was there was a there was that a makes sense. Was, sure, but it's like to Tommy's point about trying to rebuild your voice. Like why wouldn't you do that with your the where everyone's watching, like the most valuable content that you have? So, where where are you saying? I'm saying with the games. So why like, yeah, yeah but I'm saying like, like, like your, your previous point was like, if you're going to try and do that, it's going to cost a tremendous amount of money. So are you saying on the broadcast? Cause, or no, are you no, saying no, like, not the live broadcast. I'm talking media. about like, I'm tangential media. Exactly. So like, for example, let's take the Super Bowl. Biggest thing that the NFL does it is a worldwide phenomenon, billion dollar event, right? They don't like, they control all of it. They don't just let, you know, State Farm, who's Patrick Mahomes' sponsor, come in and do behind the scenes stuff. They don't let, like, they control everything and they make money off of it. And I'm just saying, for Cro from a business standpoint, for CrossFit, if they really wanted to, to turn this into something they could monetize, they should control all of that content, put it on their channel, 
and have like either put it behind a paywall or something. And again, I'm not advocating for this. I just think from a business standpoint, that's what maybe makes the most sense. Yeah, that that would be it's a bad unpopular. Feature. I get it. Yeah, I, I, I guess I don't I don't wholeheartedly disagree, but I think like for for what I what I assume to have been like an oh shit moment. How are we going to do this? I don't think that you're going to. I don't think that the dollars were available there to hire a kick-ass media team that was going to do a tremendous job and put out the type of media that agreed. Different yeah, groups, and I, that different groups with proven media capabilities mm-hmm. could do um, and would be anxious to. Yeah, I and I understand. Like, I get the intent behind it. I understand what they're trying to do, and I'm just just coming at this from the business side of things. Like, all right, yeah. how do we get our ship our ship in order here, and we can, you know, figure out how to monetize what we have of what, that things of value that we have that we can monetize because that's kind of their job, right? Um, yeah. And again, you know, Buttery Bros did a fantastic job, but they their channel got the views. They're, did, you know, they're, you know, I mean, they're, so. and, you, and then the only, yeah, exactly. And then you can say though, that they were, they were there promoting the CrossFit games. And so I guess what I'm saying is I, 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 I believe that they didn't have the capability to do it themselves. And so mm-hmm. this was a good yes. solution. I, to that. Yeah. And I, I think it's like, is this the, I'd be, I'd be very interested if this is the full-time solution. I'm just, yeah. I'm curious to that because you're essentially taking something of value and yeah. you're not getting any, I mean, I guess you're charging people a little bit to, to do it, but you know, in the long run, is that the right decision to make from a business standpoint? So, yeah, I, I, you know, yes, I would have to say that like until they, just from what I know, I think that it, that it was a good business decision this year. Okay. Um, but I hear what you're saying. Like, I'm sure that they wish that they had a DeLorean and they could hit whatever it was like 86 miles an hour in it and go back and like keep the media crew. Mm-hmm. Um, but, um, yeah, for where it's at right now, I feel like, look, we just need to get the word out. We need we need to partner with people who are making pro CrossFit, you know, bring yeah. awareness to CrossFit, et cetera. Yeah. Like, sure. it's a good solution. But yeah, you, we'll, I'm probably beating a dead horse. You, men- you mentioned the difference in interaction. And this, I guess, is another point I, I kind of wanted to dig into a little I, bit. I also made it back to the future reference. And I feel like you guys are just that like, was nice. Over. I appreciate they it. They overlook it. it. They did overlook it. Did, <laughs> you mention, did you mention the flux capacitor? I was trying no. to think of what the exact right. I didn't get uh, there just because it felt so flat. I just moved on. No, it, <laughs> it, it was went a over gr- my head, but I was waiting I don't even think Laura and Tommy were alive when that movie was made. <laughs> it was right. a great movie. It was a great movie reference. I was actually in my head trying to think, was it 86 miles an hour? Yeah, it was 88 miles an hour. And that movie came out, I believe, in 1985. So uh, I wasn't born yet, but see, there you go. I saw it in the theater. Uh, I, was, I was still a twinkle. <laughs> yep. Um, but, <laughs> um, but have you noticed a different shift in how, I guess one of the things that has always been how HQ treats outside entities in the way they present themselves, right? Like, like we know from the past, they've had a tendency to like throw their weight around and almost act as if they're doing you a favor or, or, you know, you know, very much act like they know they're the 800 pound gorilla in the room. And, you know, if you make it out, great. If not, then whatever, we're still the 800 pound gorilla. And it seems like it may, at least maybe there's been a slight adjustment in that. I don't, on your end. Absolutely. I mean, okay. and, you know, my, my, my dealings, um, from a business perspective is mostly, you know, if I'm talking to people from HQ, oftentimes it's just like friends and it's not, it's not official business, but mm-hmm. yeah, like take the geek cross games, for example, like, um, it was a, it was tremendously professional and, um, yeah, I give them really high marks and, in, in you know, how things went down from, from tip to tail. We had very few complaints about, um, anything in the process. Um, and, and I think, uh, like some of this is like you and I need to, sorry, I'll speak for myself. I had to really adjust my view because it used to be when I, when I first started working outside of the organization, I would be, I would still be speaking to a friend who was still inside the organization and I would be dealing with the friend as a friend. And then I came to the realization that like, this person is still my friend and and I love them to death, but there are decisions being made that have nothing to do with them. And all these people loved me and they were, they were still friends, but they were beholden to, Mm -hmm. um, a completely new organization and structure, et cetera. Right. Um, and so now moving forward, it's like, uh, if I'm dealing with one person at CrossFit, I'm dealing with all people at CrossFit. Um, I don't know if that makes any sense, but like, so, yeah. you know, if, if, if uh, sometimes you'd hear different answers from different people and you just have to bring them all into the same room and call them out. But I think that, um, yeah, again, I'll just use the, the example of the CrossFit games. Like it was, 
it, it was smooth. We were well taken care of. I think some of that had to do with the uh, the, the rocky patch we had at semifinals. And <laughs> actually, I think it had, it had more to do more than a little bit to do with that. But mm-hmm. to their credit, they addressed that and they saw that as an issue. And and uh, and it fits back into the conversation that we're talking about. Like, forget about the business side of it um, monetarily, Sean, from the media stuff. But I think um, Rich's situation at semifinals, even though it was like maybe blown out of proportion a bit, it um, I think it was an aha moment for a lot of people where they're like, well, I mean, yeah, obviously we need to, yeah, we need to identify like who's potentially partnering on this, even if it was like, I don't, I don't, I don't know the correlate in the NFL example, but I'm certain that those guys probably get, I'm sure that it's at least acknowledged that they bring benefit to yes the sport as a whole, um, especially if you're dating Taylor Swift. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we are there get... any plans for rich to possibly date taylor swift i mean that there you go that's I was, well I, you know what and actually that is the only answer like that we could definitively say from this conversation is that <laughs> like if if kelsey <laughs> and swift were to sponsor the crossfit games or just show up they just have to show just up show up then that's crossfit's right. back on good footing like now you Boom. Know? oh man <laughs> all right i just can't wait to hear sean open a broadcast Hello, Swifties. We'll be here all night. Good night, <laughs> Rico, uh, no, Please know. My yeah, favorite really was the, uh, like the, the Swifty wearing a Travis Kelsey fan with his name misspelled on the back of the jersey. Oh, oh that was good. K-E-L-S-E-Y. Yeah. Even yeah. better. It, at least you're trying. At least you're trying. So. <laughs> well, and, and actually, it's, it's funny. Like uh, We talked about that on Rich's podcast as, as much as it pissed him off. Um, <laughs> but the, uh, the side benefit is, like, and... and uh, I don't know how we can tie this into the current conversation, but it's like there is a whole group of people, including my 12 year old daughter, who all of a sudden has a very active interest in NFL football. Yeah, then that's oh, great. It's, like, it's so, fantastic. Mm-hmm. You know, and everyone yeah. who's annoyed, everyone who's mad, like the over Taylor. So understand the marketing dollars and like the, every that. Yeah, it's like, I mean, the, come that, on, the NFL is going to, yeah, they're going to put they their just finger had on a Toy Story time. game. I mean, that was amazing. They're, th- they're throwing mm-hmm. all sorts of, Different kinds. Of, I mean, what is it? Seven different kinds of smoke at, at oh, trying to get new people. They're just geniuses at doing it. Too. Yeah, it's yeah. the Toy Story game was actually a lot of fun to watch. That was incredible the way they did that. I liked I like Slinky Dog being the yeah uh, the, the, marker, the, the, the yard yard marker. comes in and spot. Did you Brilliant. see any of that row? It was like in real time. They translated I'll be honest, going I, onto I, the field into no, like it, toy story characters playing out the game, and it was brilliant. I sat there and watched like the whole second half of the Toy Story game. Oh, I love it. No, I saw I saw the promo it, and I'll be honest. I just uh, I was I was disinterested because yeah. I was out a little bit too late. I I went to oh, I think I told you I went to my high school reunion this last weekend. Oh wow! wow. Yeah, so Papa, Papa was up a little bit later than he's used to being up. Is know? this the twenty year? My twenty year got busted by COVID, so I I was class right. of two thousand, and um, okay, so, so this was kind of like a makeup, and it was cool because okay. it was just like a smaller group of friends and like people yeah. that you wanted to see, but. Um, but I did go to the uh, the other UT. Like people here, when you say UT, they think you're talking about Tennessee. But Tennessee, I went to the Texas right. game mm-hmm. on Saturday, which was epic. They're, ba- and, they're uh, back. They're back, dude. And then my boys barely pulled one out against Dion. Neon Dion. Yeah, oh, man. Oof. I was gonna, I was gonna text. I almost texted you when uh, they they. I think they brought it with, with, back to a touchdown, um, and it just <laughs> it felt like shades of USC oh, hope. Oh. It was terrifying. Thankfully, like I, I left to go to UT game, like in the third quarter, just confident, like you know, chest out mm-hmm. real big because we were up by three touchdowns. And then I looked at the final score. Whoops, and I was like, oh my God. <laughs> well, let's let's do this. I always like to end on a positive. You know, so let's just go around here and just. Ooh. What are you optimistic about in this space, Lauren? You want to go first? No. <laughs> <laughs> I'll go. You know what? Here, I'll go first, and I will Come say what makes. Me. <laughs> I think there's a couple things that make me optimistic. No. The first is that. And I was actually talking to Bat Sherwood about this. The methodology works. Even if you do it badly, you're going to see results, right? You, the, the methodology works. So that's one thing. So you can't, like, that's going to continue. The other part is, is, and I think, Ro, you alluded to this uh, you, with your experience at the CrossFit Games. When you get out in this community in person, you realize how many good people are actually in it, doing good work and trying to change lives on a daily basis. And I think as long as you have those, like, those foot soldiers out there, like, things are going to be, Okay. So that's, that's where I try to, when I kind of start going to a negative headspace about what's going to happen with CrossFit and where it's headed. You know, and I, like I said, there are a lot of questions that need to be answered in my mind from a business standpoint as to where this brand is going. 
But on the ground, in the affiliates from a day-to-day basis, it's a fantastic second to none experience. And I would just inc- you know, encourage people to, to just lean into that. So that, that's, where I, that's where I'm optimistic. Okay, okay. I'll tag team off of that. Um, every morning, I start my day in an affiliate, working out with the members. Then I coach a class. And it truly does breed some of the most genuine amazing people all right Ro. <laughs> yeah i i think that, that both of those are, are tremendous observations and i and um maybe i'll go long here but i think um to to even unpack further what you're saying about uh, the community element of it this um I, I i'm baffled and amazed and uh my heart explodes when i think about the fact of like um all of the bullshit that's happened over the last um since 2017 really like mm-hmm. there's been multi-wave hold downs um a company being bought out and the, you know like there's just a, a million things that have happened right and the fact that i can still walk into um any 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 affiliate that i've been to in recent years and vibes are good and, and in fact many of them don't even know about this stuff yeah frankly it's true like, we're very deep in the weeds because um <laughs> this is our life and this is our passion and it's been most of our careers for a long time. Um, that, that the fact that I, I, I'm convinced that any other community, whether it's fitness based or um, maybe religion would be the exception where all of all of these things continued to happen and continued to happen and continue to happen. It seemed like they would stop anybody else in their tracks or it would splinter any other community or send mm-hmm. them flying in different directions. Um, there is still this massive, um, uh, sense of community and the shared values and and um, although it's it's altered slightly and changed but like it's all still based on the same stuff um, and that's over all six continents that I've been to CrossFit gyms on and even in the last couple of years you know different countries doesn't matter um, that that's that's something that like it just can't be replicated right so like what what what's been built in that sense is not going anywhere right and I know people have said this before it's like whether it's called CrossFit or it's called something else like there's um, the, the fact that people have been fighting so hard against the against the current to kind of keep it together. That now that there's opportunities to kind of write that ship and get back in the in uh, the direction we want to be going is uh, is tremendously positive. So yeah. if we can if we can handle adversity in that way, um, I think that there's um, there's still you know a rainbow behind the clouds. I he almost took the words out of my mouth. I was going to try and use some other movie analogies that like you know whether it's was it Fez, Will Ferrell's character in uh, in Austin Powers? They just keep trying to kill oh, yeah. him, and he just won't die. You shot me. <laughs> you shot me in the arm. I'm I so broke in my other leg. <laughs> yeah. Burned badly. And he's still oh, around. Open the door. Or I guess a better one would be Forrest Gump ship, right? Like, made it through the storm, and now you're, now you're the, the one boat left to, mm-hmm. to reap the rewards. Like, uh, all the things that Ro touched on, things that have happened over the last five years, um, and that we're still here talking about it, yeah. is, I think, is a is a testament that there's uh, deep enough roots to for something to big and beautiful to grow out of it. Well, I don't know if we provided any clarity or answered any questions, <laughs> but I certainly enjoyed the conversation. Uh, and Ro, we appreciate you coming on and you know shedding some light on 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 everything and providing your perspective. It's always a pleasure to oh, talk to you, man. This is a blast, man. This is a blast. Uh, yeah, I don't know that we again, like, yeah, the, these are these are harder, more nuanced answers. Yes. Than, well, the opportunity to buy, but yeah, my, my ending thought is, um, yeah, I, I hope everyone, everyone should identify for themselves and not, not listening to anybody else's opinion. They should identify for themselves, like where they, where they really want this to go and think about if there's any kind of influence they can have, whether it's, um, just sharing certain content or just maybe just representing by example. Um, yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, bro, thanks so much for taking the time. Uh, thanks everybody for listening. Really appreciate it. May, you know, have these conversations amongst yourselves. Let us know maybe if there's anything, any questions you have or solutions potentially. I'd love to hear them. So that's going to do it for Lauren Khalil and Tommy Marquez and our special guest, Roy McKernan. I'm Sean Woodland. Take care of each other. Be better. And we will talk to you guys next time.